electric cars are advancing so rapidly that driving an internal combustion engine car may soon be like using a phone box. But how does this technology work? Allow the Vox network to explain. Electric cars are as old as cars themselves, with the first electric car being developed by William Morrison in the USA way back in 1891. While things have moved on a bit the electric car still consists of three main items, a motor, inverter and battery. Let's start with the induction motor, which drives the wheels of your car. The first induction motor was invented by Nikola Tesla in 1887 and consists of two main items, the rotor, typically a cylinder made up of a series of conduction bars short-circuited by N-rings, and the stator which is given a three-phase AC or alternating current pulse hits this current and the coils. That produces what is known as a four-pole rotating magnetic field or RMS, controlling both the AC power frequency and the pulse amplitude is the inverter, which is basically the brains of an electric car. When you hit the accelerator pedal the inverter is actually increasing AC current to the motor. The inverter also plays a crucial role in regenerative braking. As soon as you come off the accelerator in an electric car, the same induction motor now acts as a generator by ensuring the rotor speed is greater than the RMF speed. An opposing electromagnetic force acts on the rotor during this process, causing the driven wheels to slow down, while any generated electricity can be stored in the battery pack. The battery pack is where the motor gets all its juice from. You may not be able to store electricity, but you can store electrical energy and the chemicals inside a battery. Most batteries look like those little tubes that power your DV's remote control. But in the case of a car battery, that tightly package together into a series of modules or cells, using lots of small cells, instead of a few big cells allows the car to cool its batteries more effectively, which improves the lifespan of the battery pack. You can wire cells together in parallel or in series, to increase, either voltage, or amperage, or both. You can think of voltage as stored charge, or just imagine your bathtub full of water, if you started to let water out of the plug hole. You can measure that rate of flow. In a battery, this flow or current is measured in amps. If you were to fill the bath with more water, the float rate out the plug hole would still be limited, so a greater voltage can be limited by the unperished. When a battery charges, ions of lithium typically move through an electrolyte soup from the positive electrode made of lithium cobalt oxide, and attaches to the negative electrode, made of carbon. During this discharge, the lithium ions move back from the carbon to the lithium cobalt oxide. It's a process that is stable, and efficient enough to repeat again and again. Simscape enables engineers to model, and simulate physical systems. Physical systems are made of electrical, mechanical, thermal and other components, things you can see, touch measure and describe using laws of physics. Electric vehicle has electric motors, a mechanical driver train, and a cooling system, to keep temperatures in check. All of these parts, have to work together, the motors convert electric energy from the battery, to mechanical energy that turns the gears, shafts and wheels, and some of that energy is converted to heat. Engineers can use a model of the system, for tasks like sizing the battery, and motor, estimating the range and efficiency of the vehicle, 
increasing its acceleration, or determining how to cool the motor. In this video we'll size the motor and make sure it doesn't overheat. Our test scenario is passing another vehicle on an uphill road. The torque produced by the motor must be enough for these tough conditions. We'll simulate this scenario to determine how much torque is needed and pick a motor. Some of the energy taken from the battery is converted to heat. If the motor gets too hot, the wires will burn through their insulation and destroy the motor. With Simscape we can easily add thermal behavior without redriving all the equations. Simscape takes the component equations for each block and derives the equations describing the entire system based on how you connect these blocks. To make sure the system works no matter how hot it is outside, we can take our virtual car anywhere, from Siberia to the Sahara, without leaving our desk. First, we'll use Simscape to model the mechanical system. Next, we'll explore simulation results to refine the requirements for the motor. Then we'll account for its thermal behavior and determine the amount of cooling needed. Let's get started. We use full blocks. Let's use A to work source to represent the motor that can give us as much torque as we need. The C connection represents the motor housing. We attach that rigidly to the chassis of our vehicle. The R port represents the motor shaft which we connect to a gearbox to increase the output torque. Now we add wheels to make the car move, a mass to give it inertia and a motion sensor to measure the car's speed. The components of our model are connected to each other just like they are in the actual system. The lines connecting the components represent equations that describe how the components interact with one another. Each component also has equations describing its behavior. We need to add rolling resistance of the tires, aerodynamic drag, and the road incline. We can add a friction block to capture the rolling resistance and drag. A force source lets us model the effect of gravity when driving up a steep hill. Now our speed levels off but we're still going pretty fast let's add a driver model to control the vehicle speed. This driver model is that the vehicle is traveling on a highway at cruising speed when it ends up behind a slower vehicle. The driver accelerates to pass the car then returns to the original lane. During the passing maneuver acceleration the motor provides 200. Newton meters of torque. Let's try increasing the torque during acceleration to 800 Newton meters. With an estimate of the required torque, we can choose a motor and incorporate its behavior into the model. The motor we've selected provides a maximum torque of 800 Newton meters and a maximum power output of 500 kilowatts. Simscape has multiple blocks to represent an electric motor, with varying levels of detail with the motor and drive components. We can incorporate realistic toward speed behavior without modeling power electronic switching events. So I think it's perfect for our analysis. Let's insert the motor in drive block and set its torque, power, and efficiency from our motor's data sheet. For this short test let's model the battery 
as a constant voltage source, with our more realistic motor the resulting passing, electrical effects, it's great that our model, helped us, pick a motor that will provide plenty of acceleration. Real motors, are not perfectly efficient not all the energy provided, by the battery goes into moving the vehicle, some of that energy is converted to heat, to see how that impacts our motor temperature let's model its thermal behavior, this helps us decide, what we need to do to keep the motor, within its rated temperature. How can we incorporate thermal effects, it's easy we can add a thermal pore to the motor, which lets us model heat transfer to the environment, heat conducts to the motor, casing, and convex to the outside air. We need to monitor the motor temperature so we add a temperature sensor. Now we need to add a cooling system. High performance motors use liquid cooling to remove heat the motor. Casing transfers heat to the coolant and the radiator dumps that heat to the environment. The pipe block allows us to model heat exchange between a moving fluid and the wall, we use one pipe to absorb heat from the motor, and another to transfer heat to the environment, to close the fluid loop we'll insert the tank, and a mass flow, source that will serve as our pump. Using the fluid properties block, we can select the fluid flowing through, our cooling system. is the time to review the test results. I'm activating three experimental models side by side to better examine the result by showing their differences. In the first model, you see a complete car radiator system with liquid cooling, the temperature of which is 120 degrees Celsius, and according to the engine data sheet, this temperature is good. The second model shows a car with a cooling system and without liquid cooling. In this system, the engine is cooled, but the engine is more than allowed. last system, there is a car without a cooling system whose temperature rises over time.
as you can see how the temperature changes in different models. Thanks for watching this clip.